it's not like it was just a sports car designed for people who wanted to go fast. This was designed for a purpose. And I love things that were designed specifically for a purpose, like a tool, except as a fast tool that scares the crap out of me. My name is Philip Toledano, and I'm driving a 1982 Lancia 037. It's a four-cylinder, supercharged Abarth engine, 2000 cc. So I think the street version puts out about 210 horsepower, but allegedly this one, because it's got a Group B exhaust, puts out about 240 or something. They made about 200 road cars, and I've always just thought it was a beautiful thing. It's mythical in a way because it's lived more in the shadows. It's like the second album of the hit boy band, right? So Stratos came on the scene. It was incredible to look at. It was this extraordinary design. It looked like it came from Mars. It won everything for a long time, and then it kind of disappeared. The successor was the 037. So it's tough to follow the Stratos, and it was up against four-wheel drive cars like the Quattro. So it was kind of slightly doomed from the start. The Group B era in the early 80s was kind of, for me, the last era of romance. We all lead pretty normal lives. And so when I buy a car like that, you're putting in this four-point harness. You're in a car that was designed to race rallies. And that makes you feel different. There's a lot of theatre to this car because you sit in there and when you're driving, first of all, the acceleration is fantastic, but then you hear this incredible like supercharger whine. When you shift into fifth, it makes this kind of Millennium Falcon hyperspace noise. Then you, you know, expect everything to start going towards you, which is kind of fantastic. It's like wrapping yourself in this blanket of noise. But oddly enough, it's not tiring. It's invigorating. You're hearing the whine of the supercharger. The engine's right behind you. There's this little piece of glass between you and the engine, and that's it. I mean, there's no soundproof or anything. So it's raucous. This car, oddly enough, compares very much to driving the M1 that I have. Just in terms of handling, I mean, it feels very similar. It's a lot less civilized than the M1. Which is good, because it gives you a lot of confidence when you're driving, and I need as much confidence as humanly possible. Because I'm the Woody Allen of car people. I'm always nervous and worried and freaking out about noises, and am I gonna end up in the weeds? It wasn't designed to be predictable. It wasn't designed to, to comfort you. It wasn't designed to get you at great speed in comfort and in safety. It was designed to do a thing. In the 037, on the dash, you've got the circuit board so you can reset circuits, which is obviously the job of the navigator. You've got the navigator's light. You've got the oil temp gauge, which is way on the right-hand side, so the navigator can keep an eye on that. The roll cage, which is built into the cockpit, but you have to step over the roll cage to get into the car. There was a lot of anticipation for the successor to the Stratos. And then it was this sort of thing where the light that burns twice as bright burns half as long. So it was there for a very short amount of time before they replaced it with the S4. So it wasn't around for very long, but people remember it. 